you're being you're being you're being programming So guys, I want to go back a little bit and you'll see why, because if it intrigues me, it's going to intrigue you guys. Now, pineal, the etymology, as you can see, 1680s in reference to the gland in the brain, the French pineal, literally like a pine cone, from the Latin pineal, pine cone, from pinus, pine tree. Now, what I've done is, I can't believe I missed it. <laughs> That's the first thing I've got to say. But the Latin pineal, when I was doing this video, it, for some reason, it just screamed out to me. So I've done a quick etymology on pineal. Now, yes, you can see it means pine cone, but I've split it up to the following. I've just basically split it in two. As you can see, pin, e, a, pin, ear. Now, this is where it gets intriguing. Some of you automatically will see something that strikes out to you. That is the e, a, meaning enki also known as IA, also known as Janos. <laughs> and we know the occult name for the pineal is 
Yanos. So there's a connection straight away without even trying. So let's have a look at pin. So pin, basically from Old English pin, peg, bolt of wood or metal used to hold things in place or fasten them together. From the Proto-Germanic pen, jutting point or peak, a pin, a peg. You can see it goes all the way down to pins and pegs. But here's where it gets intriguing. And we're talking about the pineal gland. From Latin, pinna, a feather, a plume, a, in plural, a wing. Also, fin, scoop of a water wheel. Also, a pinnacle, a promontory, cape, battlement. And it's applied to points of the various sorts from root pet to rush to fly so we're talking about things to make you fly but think about it it's now talking about it being a, a feather and wing now it says underneath the van on what can say the latin pinna is a derivative of penna literally means feather all the theories regarding pinna as a separate word for the root meaning sharp point the latin word also was borrowed in celtic irish pinna a pin a peg a spigot welch pin but also it's talking about a pen now in olden times he used to write with a feather, which was a quill. Now are they talking, as you can see in grey underneath, is this in reference to the, the famous verse, the pen is mightier than the sword. So pen is a part of the pinea, is the pinea mightier than the sword. Now the sword, it gets wielded, but is, is it talking about spells, the, the spoken word? You need consciousness, uh, sentient, a soul, a, um, a connection, which is the pineal. So you need that to power the sword, the spells. It's just an intriguing idea and it just blew my mind. It's also talking underneath as being a part of a lock or a latch. Again, who's the god of doorways, passageways and portals? And is the occult name for the pineal? Yes, you got it. Janos. And it's talking about it being a latch. <laughs> it just blew me away and it's just adding more to this theories that I'm using in regards to Janos being not insignificant but a connection to everything in this reality now it's talking about feather it's talking about wings and I thought you know what let me see if there's a verse and it actually sounds like a bit like the toroidal field too he who will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge well if it's a feather and a wing the pineal and you find refuge under it it screams to me the toroidal field what is the power behind the toroidal field i was asking last week in my video toroidal field what could be the power the power behind it, the soul and we here we are a week later find etymology for pineal and it's talking about a door and a latch guys it's just wow <laughs> it just blew me away so i want to reiterate what i've just said pinea all the etymology for it the feather the wings the peg the pin the pen or latch the lock the fin of a water wheel of e air uh, the sumerians the anunnaki well the anunnaki mainly have wings there's the feather there's your pine cone and also enki janos is associated with water and wisdom and it's just blew me away guys you can just see why i had to include this little bit for you guys because it just connects everything <laughs> it really does right guys so let's look at other theories that i was talking about i want to include a few to give you a broad spectrum you know spectrum of what people believe actually is going on in the pinecone ritual now here this is from wikimedia commons and they're talking about how the bucket and pinecone is held by the apakalu which are seven Sumerian sages, wise men, or demigods, depending on what you want to look at them. And they were created by Enki or Ea. And it is a ritual where they sprinkle, as you can see, Bandodu, ritual bucket containing sacred water. And the, the Mulalu is pine cone for sprinkling sacred water. So it's a ritual where they are sprinkling sacred water on people's heads bodies a bit like a baptism etc and i'm going to show you a few things which will make you you know you can see where th they actually got it from it's it's just mind-blowing guys so it's just again just a theory on what people believe they are now the apakalu are 
come in three different forms. It is a fishkin cloaked apakaloo, a bird headed apakaloo, and a human apakaloo, which is a lot. <laughs> it is a big mouthful, but they come in them three forms. And what's intriguing is these apakaloo, according to some scholars, are ones that gave men their MEs. Now, if you're wondering what their MEs are, they basically are connection, our laws from God. And a few years ago, I did a video showing you that people who believe, you know, in the Mandela effect, the origins of the Mandela effect are these maize. They actually pronounce maize, these MEs, and they date back all the way to the Sumerian times. And the, and the effect, everything that the the Mandela effect is affecting. So it's intriguing, isn't it? It goes really deep. And hopefully, guys, people will check that video out if you're intrigued. So here's objects held by the apakalu, as I've talked about, the pine cone, a raised hand. And with that little thing that people talk about or watch, I'll get into that a bit later. A ritual bucket with the holy water, scepter or a mace, a flowering bunch and a prayer bead rosary. What do all them things remind you of? Now, I will show you, it's coming up now, what intrigued me is how the connection and how they've put modern, what would I say, modern, modern religion, the practices are all coming back from these ancient civilizations and cultures. So just remember some of these things, a pine cone might actually not be a pine cone, but might, something else might be used in its purpose, a scepter, the ritual bucket, the prayer beads. Now have a look at this, guys, and tell me what is the difference. I don't see it any. So I always try and remain objective, but what's the difference, guys, between this, what the Pope is using, and the Apakalu, the wise men, the sages, in the ritual of the pine cone? There's none to me, it even looks like a pine cone on a, on, on a stick, doesn't it? it if you're being objective. Now, what is the, the actual ritual that they're doing? Are they purifying the pineal gland? Are they activating the pineal gland in the Apakalu with the pine cone? Because it talks about it being a water wheel, remember, in pin. And also, the cult name for it is Janos, who is Enki, e -A. So, is it the holy water, they activate in the holy water? Now, as you can see, again, holy bucket and um, pine cone on a, on a stick. Same to me, they're just not using a pine cone. It's right in your face. Uh, so like I said, I try and remain objective in these, but to me, this is just the modern interpretation of the Apakaloo's objects that they have. They have rosary beads, obviously. Here, this isn't this like the, the bunch of flowers, uh, flowers, I say, uh, the bunch that was in the Apakaloo's objects. And if we go to this image, you can see they actually do use what looks like flowers. So you can just see the intriguing nature. What I'm trying to get at is this is just a modern interpretation of what the Apakaloo is using. Have a look at this at the pub. They have a bucket and the pine cone on the stick. <laughs> but look at that. Is that not looking like a pine cone? And he's actually putting it near the pineal. Is he trying to activate his own pineal in this ceremony? Who knows? I'll leave it up to you guys. But that's just the first actual theory that the pine cone is just a ritual for the apakaloo to activate the, the pineal gland in the water, the holy water ceremony. Another theory is that they were actually a gate fossilized pine cones. And I will show you images near the end of this little section. Now they were actually to ward off and banish evil spirits and demons using the crystal in a purification ritual. A gate, now look how it is, a gate means a gate, were used as protection and jewellery was made to wear aid that fight and against demons. So when you see the Sumerian things of, oh, these are watches or devices, they were actually <laughs> just jewellery with agate crystals and other precious stones in them to what you know to help him in the fight against demons. So what you see now is actually fossilized agate pine cones. So actually pine cones fossilized with agate. Now there's so many different ones I could have shown you. And you can just see, could they have been using this? A bit like the water purification to ward off, to banish evil demons or spirits in people. It's just another theory <laughs> to add to the list of what is flying around out there. But what is funny, and here's one actually completely fossilized throughout. What made me go, 
Mmm, a laugh. Well, so obviously, I'm talking about the pineal. And obviously, here's just a generic picture of pineal. And then I came across a negate crystal sliced in half. And look what it looked like. <laughs> it was like just, hey, that is the pineal gland. So it just made me chuckle when I seen that. See what you guys think about this one. And I couldn't resist it, I really couldn't. So I typed in a gate pine cone in Gematria and got 326, which as you can see, adds up to 11. So obviously a gate, a gate is actually 11 in Gematria. You know, the doorway, the portal, the gateway, the number 11. So the next theory of what the pine cone is is something called the Shamir. Now this is intriguing. I don't know who first came up with this idea of it being connected, but in Jamara, the Shamir is a worm or a substance that has the power to cut through or disintegrate stone, iron and diamond. King Solomon is said to have used it in the building of the first temple in Jerusalem in the place of cutting tools. So it's very intriguing that someone was just asked the question, is the pine cone that the Sumerians and Anaki have this? Now, next is some engravings of alleged stone worms that were or could be the Shamira or the Shamir. Now, if you look at them, you can see why people think the pine cone that has been held in the hands is the Shamir. It does to me, it's an out of box theory. But it makes you think, and that's why I love these ideas. In this reference, it's more of a, a snake or a worm. It's intriguing, isn't it? Now, if you put it in, in regard to the pine cone, you can see why. It does really do look like it. It's not identical, but I just love an out-of-the-box theory, and this is one of that. So could they actually have been using this Shamir for any purposes you know in regards to buildings now if you remember my old dendera light bulb theory being a serpent a worm etc could dendera be a place where they actually grew these shimmers in 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 an incubator that's just it just makes you think doesn't it and that's all i ever ask could in fact these shimmers be grown in dendera now, this is a very f famous image of a calcified pineal. Now, what got me is the Shamir comes from the Aramaic meaning flint stone. Now, if I put an image of a flint stone next to a calcified pineal, and we're talking about the pineal, and we're talking about the Shamir or Shamira, tell me, that is not <laughs> identical. I'm like, wow, calcified pineal fluoride looks strikingly like a flintstone and the Aramaic word for shimir is shimir meaning like a flintstone so they saying that the pineal gland is like a flintstone was in fact these shimirs that could cut things with a glance and they were talked about only being a centimeter to two centimeters in, in length wow you try and hold that to cut something it'd be very hard were these shimirs put into people and used as cutting tools or is it just a, the talk of the pineal gland power that we've not talked about people are always talking about in these Tartarian groups how did he cut these buildings well that looks like melted stone once if the power of this Shamir has been taken away from us it's just intriguing isn't it and the ritual that they're doing could be is in in a sense the entering these Shamirs into people it's just a thought, it's just a, a way out of the idea, see what you guys think. But to me, if the Shamir means like a flintstone and a calcified pineal gland and the surrounding area looks like a flintstone, that is a big connection for me. And that's a wrap guys, I just wanted to make a short video for you guys, even though it took a while. <laughs> to just go through a few theories out there on what the pine cone, the bucket, the watch, etc. could be. It could be a case of these people were just picking pine cones off a tree or collecting them to make pine needle tea. Who knows? Sometimes we do overthink things or it could be metaphorically, etc. All that good stuff that they're talking about the moment that they were picking 
our consciousness, our soul off the tree of life or the tree of knowledge and implanting the pine cone or activating the pine cone within us, which is the pineal. So it can be all of those good things or nothing or nothing I mentioned. Like we always say, we can't put every theory out there in the video because it'd be too long and I just wanted a quick blast short video for you guys to look at a few theories out there on what the, the, the bucket and pine cone actually is. I've, I like a few of the things that I've found. I like a few of the things of the etymology that I've found. That absolutely bl blew my mind. I just hope you guys appreciate and enjoyed what you've seen. The, the pine cone could be the pineal gland, metaphorically. It could be talking about the, you know, the planting of the consciousness into man, the actual moment. Who knows what these things are, but <laughs> it's just... I've enjoyed making this one, even though it's short. It felt like I've been on it forever, to be honest, but in a good way. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you want to donate with Buy Me a Coffee, the link's in the description. And if you remember, because <laughs> I'm like a goldfish at times, I will put in links to things about Sumeria and different things that I've done video already on on Tendera. Right guys, take care, stay safe, always wear a smile and don't let the bastards grind us down. Bye guys.